How are we all doing this week? So we are approaching those summer months, aren't we? Well, June, officially, we are now in summer. Um, and I don't know about you, but when we get to those summer months, I um, I start looking at my skin a little bit more. There's more of it on show. <laughs> uh, and so I thought it would be a really good um, episode this week if I talked a little bit more about our skin and explain how it's made up and It is actually the largest organ in our body and even in the winter months, the one that is constantly visible. And we don't really think about it as an organ. And I think we sometimes forget that it is, you know, it is part, of course, it's part of us. But you know what I mean? That we that we forget that it is part of our makeup and that we need to care for it in the same way. We think of our heart and our liver and our lungs and our kidneys and our digestive system, but actually we should be thinking about our skin in the same way. Vitamin D, we've talked a lot about vitamin D in the past and I did a whole episode on vitamin D. If you want to go back and listen to that, it's episode 111, 111. And I talk all about vitamin D and the benefits of uh, of it. We've talked a lot about it during COVID times and things. So do go back and listen to that one. It's a really good one. But actually we synthesize vitamin D through our skin. That's where we get it. So again, it's really important for that. Um, And also it's important for sensation. So we feel through our skin those sensations you know and and again in this what we're thinking about is making sure it's working optimally so that we do get those sensations so we feel heat and cold through our skin and if if our skin isn't working properly if we're not taking care of it then we won't feel it so it's a very delicate balance it does lots and lots of things for it that we might not have really thought about before and it and our skin operates in a really delicate balance so talking about skincare um Amazing facts on skincare. So on average, women use 12 personal care products a day. Okay. Now, you know, thinking about this, we're talking about, you know, perfume, we're talking about foundation, we're talking about moisturizer, we're talking about, you know, um, uh, toners, we're talking about uh, uh, shampoo, conditioner, all of these kind of personal deodorant, all of these are personal care products. Men tend to use less. Women, we obviously use more. Men tend not to use makeup. So that kind of adds in it. And the average, and this is a great kind of stat, the average is 168 unique ingredients. And I think what we need to be really mindful of that is how many ingredients we are putting on our body at any one time. Now, our skin is not impermeable. It is a protective layer, but it isn't impermeable. And it really depends on the molecular size of the ingredients, whether or not they are able to penetrate the different layers of skin. Now, some of these things are beneficial, like so vitamin C creams, if we put vitamin C, we want that to get through, we want that to get into our skin. But many Many skincare products contain chemicals, and these are hard, potentially harmful chemicals. And no, there aren't many banned. There's only eleven. I think it's eleven in total banned chemicals from skincare products. But what I worry about is the the kind of the layering up of these skincare products. If you're using a lot of skincare products that have chemicals in them, you are layering up your chemical load, your toxic load, and this is going into your body. So remember, we're meant to be getting rid of toxins from our skincare or from our skin. And then our skincare is putting some of those blinking toxins back in. This is not a good thing. And it will reach our bloodstream If the particle's the right size, it will come in and it will reach our bloodstream. So it adds to our toxic load. And I talk to clients about this all the time. When I see women and I realize how many products they are using, you know, body wash and shower gel and all these things that are kind of just not not natural products. And if you are, if you're not prepared to eat it, you probably shouldn't be putting it on your skin because it's going to go through the bloodstream, go through your skin and into your bloodstream, which is what food does, isn't it? Because you eat food, which is in your stomach, which remember is external to your body. And then it comes in through your digestive lining and into your bloodstream. The last thing that I want to talk to you about is just a little bit to think about bringing those two together. So the the digestive microbiome and the skin microbiome. Now, not necessarily bringing the two together, but thinking about the link. And if our digestive system is not working particularly well, as I've said, your skin 
is, you know, the biggest organ in the body and the most visible one. And if you have issues with your digestive system, it will often show on your skin first. So we excrete the toxins. If these toxins come out of the body, they come through our skin, through our breath, through our urine, through our feces. And so it's, you can, you know, but it's coming through our skin. You know, we, we definitely think of waste product coming out of other parts, but not out of our skin. And they do. So it is a really big indicator of health. So if you find that you are suddenly getting rashes or that you have eczema or psoriasis or acne, they can often be an indicator that there is something going on in the digestive system and it's and it's showing up through your skin you know if you're constipated and you have toxins in your body they've got to come out somewhere and if you get rashes rashes can aren't always from something that's touched the skin rashes can be from things that, have, that you've digested so it's a very good indicator if your skin is looking healthy or if your skin isn't looking healthy that there may be something going on in your digestive system and also to think about in those terms that you know if you have eczema or you know rashes or psoriasis that if you're treating it topically externally are you missing that extra link to think about the inside and the digestive system and that is where somebody like me somebody like a a nutritional therapist can help you because they can then help to work from outside in. So we're healing from the outside in and the inside out. Inside out even, I got it the wrong way around, but you know what I mean, basically healing the gut to help heal the skin. Um, So inside out, (laughs) I think that's the point to go now, isn't it? Definitely. So I hope that's kind of give you a little bit of, you know, a kind of whistle stop the tour through skin and um, through the different levels and to think about it a little bit differently. Yes, you know, aesthetically, we want lovely plump skin and we want it, you know, we want, we want that as much as we can, but remembering that it comes from inside. So making sure we eat the right foods that we're drinking a- enough and that we're using the right products on our skin will help that overall health. So that's it from me for this week. Um, in my whistle stop tour of the skin join me next week where I've got the lovely Tracy Peshort I think I said that right <laughs> um, it's a fab episode you're gonna absolutely love it so remember that a podcast goes live every single Wednesday um just one request for you guys please is that if you've enjoyed this episode I would love it if you went on and left me a review I always appreciate your reviews I'll give you a shout out if you leave me one um, and it helps other people find them and if this has kind of rung any bells for you and you think someone else could uh, could you know benefit from learning a little bit more about skin then do share the episode with them that's it from me for this week I'll see you next week Thank you for watching this excerpt of this week's um, Are You Really Going to Eat That podcast? If you'd like to listen to the full episode, then the link is in the notes below.